All right, folks, let's get started with programming our very own graphical user interface. It is very important that when you start your REPL project that instead of choosing basic Python, we're going to choose the programming application interface uh, TK Enter, which is a big old library, much like Turtle. It's so big that it gets its own, you know, area of code on REPL, uh, just like Turtle did. Now, I know that that uh, Turtle thing kind of failed us after a while because it wasn't using Python 3, but uh, this TK interface is going to work um, well for us, I think. So we are coding in activity 214, and this is a login application that we're making. So again, TK enter is what we want to select for our language today. We're still coding in Python, just like when we did our turtle stuff. Okay. So, as I mentioned, tkinter is a big giant library that is dedicated to making graphical user interfaces, or as I call them, GUIs. Uh, tkinter is an example of an application programming interface, or API for short. What's an API? It is a way programmers share their code with other programmers. So much like in when we did a bunch of stuff in Turtle, and had to look up all the fancy methods that you use in Turtle, we're going to have to do the same thing with TK Enter. We're going to have to look up and Google a lot of stuff in order to program using this application programming interface. Now, they're going to give us a lot of the code here from the PLTW page, but we're actually going to have to Google a fair amount of stuff as well as we move along. All right, to start with, we're going to copy and paste the basic code that gets us a window. Ooh, here we go. Import TK enter as TK, so they shorten it as they always do. They make uh, an object called a root, and that is our main window. You can probably guess what this does. And there it is. It's our window. Oh, it's so beautiful. Amazing. Now, the reason that we're using TK Enter instead of basic Python is for some reason this blue bar disappears when you use um, a regular Python. I don't know why that is, but it just does. So I think we're going to stick with using the TK Enter coding environment instead of the regular Python coding environment. All right. Um, it would like us to change our size uh, to 200 by 100 pixels. Okay, so if we do that here and run it again, now it is twice as long as it is wide. Okay, now I'm actually going to make mine, uh, oh, let's do more like 600 by 300 because I hate how tiny it is. Let's see how that looks. Oh, beautiful. Here we go. Moving right along. When you have a, a root window, that's great. It's something you can put stuff in. But now we need to add a frame because a frame is what you put widgets on. All right. Now, all this code that we're putting in has to go before root.main loop. Okay. Because that's kind of like our green flag. So we got to put all this code before that. You won't really see any difference when you run it with a frame. Um, well, but the frame is what we're going to put other widgets in. Widgets like labels and text boxes and whatever else you might want to put in. Uh, the one thing you definitely need to know from this line of code is that the root here is what we're adding the frame onto. Because we're going to do, use this same idea a lot. We're going to add all our other stuff onto the frame. So our frame is going to go in the parentheses every time we make something new. Okay. Now, every time you put something on, uh, on your graphical user interface, you have to call the grid method. So we have to go with whatever you add on. You have to go 
take that name and do dot grid with parentheses. And this is the method that actually like puts it in the frame or in the window. So if you if you add like a label or a text entry and it doesn't show up right away, it's probably because you didn't call the grid method. It won't show up until you call dot grid. But as I said, adding a frame doesn't really do anything visually. So let's scroll down to number 10 and add a label because this will actually do something. Oop. Here we go. Copy and paste. Run it again. And there's our label. It has text in it. And the text is username. Um, the way that you make each of these widgets, like frames and labels, really similar to what we did with uh, turtles when we did the turtle uh, API. We, we did like turtle.turtle .turtle to make a turtle. Turtle was the library, and then turtle was also the name of the object we we're making. So here we're doing name of the library, then the name of the thing that we're creating. So instead of making turtles, we're making frames, we're making labels, whatever. And when we make these frames and labels, we're going to be setting a variety of properties. The first property is always the thing that you're adding it to. So as I mentioned like a minute ago, we're going to be adding all our widgets to the frame. So that's why we're going to see the frame as the first parameter every time we make a new widget. The second parameter here is an optional parameter. Okay. Optional parameters, we've talked about these before, but optional parameters require keywords. Okay, the keyword for this optional parameter is text. You can't just simply put username because uh, Python won't know what parameter the username is for. So you have to specify this is the text for this label because there's like a bajillion different properties that you can set. And if you don't want to set all those properties, you just leave them out and use the ones that you want to use. That's why they're called optional. Uh, we'll talk more about this pack thing later. Okay, so it talks about optional uh, keywords uh, and whatnot here. And then it talks about uh, resources. It also talked about this earlier, about resources for reading about TKinter. And unfortunately, all the FBOT resources that they give you for the FBOT website don't work because for whatever reason, FBOT is not up and running right now. So we're going to have to find some alternative resources to look up stuff, which fortunately, there's a million resources on the internet for TK Enter. Okay, number 12, just for the main loop, we're going to add a label widget um for password and we're going to set the font to courier okay i'm going to pause the video and you go ahead and try number 12 see if you can add a new label for the password and as opposed to the username go ahead okay here's what it looks like um when you put in a second label um, notice the variable names for these objects uh, begin with the type of object they are. So LBL username, LBL password, um, those start with LBL because that lets you know that they're labels. That's a really, really common practice for when you're making graphical user interfaces is you name your variables after what kind of widget they are. So I added a, a, label, a new label widget um, I set the text of the label to password, and I set the font of the label to courier. Now, I don't like how small the fonts are, so I made a new font variable up here. We did this um, last unit when we were doing the turtle leaderboard, and I want bigger text. So I'm going to make like a size 28 font, and then I'm going to uh, make it so that my font for my label username is equal to that font setup. And I'm going to make it so that the label for my password is equal to that font setup. If we run it now, we should see much larger, easier to read text. Ooh, look at that. Fantastic. All right, let's keep going. 
Okay, the pack method of, wi of widgets has options available as well. We're going to add pad y equals 50 to one and pad x equals 50 to the other. Um, so I mentioned earlier that you need to have this grid thing. Um, actually, what we're going to be using is pack instead of grid. They're kind of in a, uh, different options for how to put the thing on the screen. Um, so pad y is an optional parameter and pad x is an optional parameter and they are for the pack method or function. And let's see what happens when we put padding on our labels. Ooh, much more spaced out now. Very nice looking. Okay. Um, now, if you kept your uh, geometry as 200 by 100, um, this padding won't work for you because it's gonna space it out too far. So do some padding or geometry that makes everything fit on the frame. Okay, your user will have to enter the username and password within this window. To do that, we need text entry, entry widgets. Okay, so we need the code for text entries, which mine has disappeared. Uh, there it is, we're back. Okay, so we're gonna copy and paste this text entry code. Now watch what happens if I just keep pasting below here. Um, it's named ENT username because it's an entry widget, so ENT for entry. And there's the capital E entry because that's the kind of object we're making. Notice again we're adding it to the frame. Um, BD stands for something. And then we call the pack method again because that's what makes it show up. And we have the optional parameter padding on our entry widget. Let's hit play and see what we get. Okay, look at that, a little entry box. We can type in it. Whoop, 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 whoop. Um, now, the, unfortunately, when I put this ENT username at the end of my code, it put the entry box at the end of my user interface. So I need to move that up here in betwixt our two labels because I want it to be for the username, not the password. There we go. Now, that's a lot of padding. Um, and I believe that padding has to do with the username. So I'm going to cut that down by quite a bit so that it's not so spaced out. Let's see how that looks. Oh, much better. Now, I would probably also like to make my um, text entry box quite a bit bigger, um, but I'm not going to look that up right now. Okay, next, we are going to look at number 17 here and add a text entry for the password. Go ahead and try this yourself. All right, uh, hopefully you created a new entry variable. Um, started, and I named mine ENT password to kind of continue the pattern here. Um, I did BD equals three like the last one. That's the border BD. And then I thought the tiny text entry boxes looked ridiculous. So I used the same font for my uh, text entry widgets as I did for the labels, which made them much bigger. This pack thing, what it does is it um, controls the layout of the widgets in relative to each other. And so basically it's just telling TK Enter to just put the widgets on there in order and then kind of uh, put them together in a way that makes sense um there's different ways to control the layout that are different than pack and grid of grid is one of those ways and we're going to talk more about grid uh, in the next video uh but honestly the most frustrating thing about making guis is getting the layout to work how you want it to um, because you can't just be like here put it here because different devices like phones and tablets and computers are different sizes so you can't just name a specific location and say put it here it doesn't work like that all right we got our main setup here we will continue in the next video